So good afternoon, normally they say the post lunch session is called a graveyard session in training terminology and uh, I have this dubious distinction, wherever I go and speak, I normally get the post lunch session. Uh, my name is Sujit and uh, I work for an organization called Infosys and I also run an NGO called Matram Foundation. Matram is a Tamil word which means transformation and not change. So I have chosen the topic called going the extra mile and when I, the moment I say going the extra mile, uh, don't think one mile is too long a distance to run. And I'll quickly explain what this topic is all about. It was May 2000, uh, I still remember, and I used to work for this company called Pizza Corner India Private Limited. Uh, Pizza Corner was just like Domino's and Pizza Hut. And straight from college, I got campus hired into this uh, brand called Pizza Corner. Uh, don't run, make your run, well, your guesses run wild. I was working there as an HR person. And in May of 2000, uh, I was auditing a restaurant, one of my restaurants in a place called Nandanam in Chennai. And it was a Tuesday afternoon. Uh, the restaurant was not busy. Normally, weekdays are generally very light in, in a this area. And suddenly, the manager shouted in a very, very loud voice, 50 large pizzas. Right? Uh, in, in, in a this area, 50 large pizzas is a big order. Normally, you get it in weekend. And if you get it on a weekday, you meet your daily target. So everybody was jumping in joy and I just couldn't understand because I was not in the restaurant business. And then I realized there were only six staff in the restaurant and they need at least seven to eight people to deliver these 50 pizzas. Okay. So the manager looked at me and asked me, uh, Sujit, do you have a driving license? And I said, yes. And he said, uh, would you mind coming with me and delivering these pizzas uh, to this company called Infosys? Uh, trust me, I didn't, I've never heard about a brand called Infosys till then. So I said, okay. And there I was, just out of college, PG, my first year at work, wearing a red t-shirt, green pants, which is a very lousy combination, by the way. And I was off to deliver pizzas in pizza, I mean, in a place called Infosys. And this was in a nice swanky office uh, called Alexander Square in Gindi. I still remember I had four boxes of pizzas on my right hand, four boxes of pizza on my left hand, and I walked in. The moment I stepped into this office, I was like dumbstruck. Because one, the air conditioned temperature inside was 80 degrees. Mercury was reeling outside at 40 to 43 degrees. And it was my childhood dream to wear a tie and a formal shirt because as an HR person, I thought that's how HR people look. And I was wearing red t-shirt and green pants, smart looking boys and girls. And I said, one day, God willing, I should come and work for this company. That same day, I met few of my HR colleagues, my friends, and I was just telling them, if only I had an opportunity to work for a brand like Infosys how cool it would be and nine out of my ten friends who are sitting there actually said this you must be a fool who hires HR person from a this area you are in pizza corner the maximum you can jump is from one restaurant to another one hotel to another because these guys will recruit only the brightest of bright minds there's only one friend in that group who eventually became my wife two years later she believed that something is there in this guy and she chose to go the extra mile. She paid attention to what I was saying and she asked me a very simple question. What makes you think that you will not get through to Infosys if you apply? And such low on confidence, I told her, look, I don't think they will hire from a this area. And she gave me this most beautiful statement I ever heard. HR is HR everywhere. You're going to deal with human beings, whether it's Visa Corner or Infosys, doesn't matter. And she took the extra mile to apply my profile at Infosys. I was interviewed for six months continuously. Whenever they felt like they used to call me for an interview and say, tell me something about you. And I would say, I just answered that question last month. No, sir, that was last month. You answered this month. It's a very different person altogether. After six long months, I was offered as an entry level HR person in Infosys. And that was in the year 2001. And this March, I will be completing 22 years with this brand. And today I had human resources for Infosys Chennai. The reason why I want to start this story is somebody went that extra mile for me when I was not very, very confident. So, ladies and gentlemen, the moment I say going the extra mile, don't think it is some rocket science. It is that one small moment that you give for somebody. It is that one small moment you listen to somebody. You volunteer for a cause. You go that extra mile to make somebody feel special. That all makes life beautiful. And that one lesson that I learned is something that I cherish, I practice day in and day out, day in and day out. So when I joined Infosys, I thought, okay, I have arrived, beautiful looking office, right opposite to this lovely university. And I thought I've arrived as an HR person. And for me, I always cherish being on stage and doing this training and talking and all the stuff. 
but 20 years back this was not the same Sujit the, back then I was very very low on confidence so my job was very clear as HR there will be trainers who will come from Bangalore office they have a, they were PhDs from reputed institutions they will come and do the training and my job was to administer the training program I need to make, basically get the equipments ready the camera ready the VCR TV attendance sheets and all this stuff but I was not allowed to train and I used to sit in that corner and wonder, what are these trainers made of? After listening to two, three programs, something told me, look, I think I can do a good job as well. So I walked up to a few colleagues and asked, what if I want to do training? In corporate terminology, there are departments. That is one department's job, other department will not get it. So everybody told me, training is not part of HR. It's a very different department altogether. So if you want to be a trainer, you need to quit your existing role and move to a different role. So I walked up to my manager, my first mentor at office and I told her, look, I'm fascinated about training. Is there no scope where I can do both? And she said, I don't know. You should, I don't know. I don't have an answer. That's, that, that does not fall into our department. So I said, can I write to the head of training and see if she will allow me to do the training? And she said, try your luck. So I wrote to the head of training, the junior most resource writing to a vice president of a company at that particular point in time with, 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 with a flashy statement saying giving me a personal certification that I'm good with training and I said if only you give me a chance I want to be a trainer surprisingly I got a reply two days later and she said we'll be more than happy to have you on board and you can do one day of stand-up training but here is the challenge my manager said you can do training but that's not part of your KRA KRA means your key result area so I cannot give any weightage to what you are doing. You have to do this, you should do it voluntarily. I said big deal, I will, I will ensure that I will do this uh, on a voluntary basis. I don't need any credit for uh, the training that I am doing. So every Friday I started doing training programs. Monday morning the company will publish a report, the list of trainers and what is their score. And every time I saw my name on a scale of 5, the score will be 4.8, 4.9, again some of the seasoned trainers. I started pulling my you know, collar and said, job well done. I got started noticing among the organization, they said, who is this kid in Chennai who is not a trainer but doing training. But that day I chose to go that one extra mile and I am going to tell you how that story has impacted my life in a big, big way. Many times we are people who are brilliant order takers. There is a nice way to ask this question, how would you like to be remembered? How would you like to be remembered in Satya Bama University 10 years from now? How would you like to be remembered in the place of work 10-15 years from now? Assuming if you come back 10 years later, will your professors remember you? And if they remember you, what will they remember you for? Who do you define as a good student? Who do you define as a good colleague at work? Who do you define as a good professional? The answer is very, very simple. These are not individuals who just do their daily tasks. They are not order takers. Order takers can go only up to a particular position, but people who choose to go one step beyond and make sure that you warm the guest, you warm your customers, you create a positive environment from people, those are individuals we call as people who go the extra mile. Let me give you a simple example. And this happened in Pizza Corner when I used to work for Pizza Corner. I used to go and volunteer in the restaurant because the restaurant is where you see different guests. You see what customers are all about. And this was in Adair. We had a nice restaurant in Adair. And I was in the cash counter on a weekday. There was this lady who was in her mid-40s who walked up. Uh, it was about 2, 2.30 in the afternoon. I still remember what she said. She said, I need two cheese garlic pizzas. And she paid the cash. And she just told me, uh, if you can just make it quick, please get this faster because I have a bad headache. This is all she said. She paid the cash. She said, I have a bad headache and if you can make it quick, no matter how fast you, you want to cook a pizza, you want to bake a pizza, it takes 17 minutes for the pizza to be slapped, itemized, it has to go into the oven and by the time the pizza comes out fully cooked, it takes 17 minutes. I said, I will get it as fast as possible. So in the store, the moment you take the bill and you punch it, there will be something called as KOT, a kitchen order ticket, which will come in the kitchen and the, the guy who is going to make the pizza has to look at the kitchen order ticket and take it. Because the restaurant was not crowded, the guy called Gangadran, who was the chef on that particular day, was standing right next to me when she was ordering the pizza. He immediately went in and started making the pizza. 
what happened next was something very beautiful he finished putting the pizza in the oven in 2 minutes took his apron out went down the restaurant and there was a medical shop called home medicals right at the, uh, uh, right uh, the next to pizza corner he took 2 rupee coin from him bought two saradon pills headache pills came back to the restaurant put it in a small plate with a glass of water walked up to the guest who was sitting there and he said ma'am i heard you say you had a bad headache please take this pill by the time you reach home you will feel better and you can enjoy the pizza gangadharan was an eighth standard dropout in pizza corner right that's the first time i ever saw a customer cry crying out of joy because she didn't she didn't say i'm having a headache can you get me a tablet she only said i'm having a headache can you make it faster can you get that pizza faster that's all she said she wrote a lovely note to the ceo thanking for this wonderful gesture and you know what i'm talking about way back in 1999 she sent a cash voucher of 5000 rupees to gangadhar so going the extra mile my dear friends is not a big deal if you have to do that consistently all that it takes is a little bit of empathy for the person around the world's best technocrats the world's world's best innovators all of them go the extra mile to make the world a better place now look at what my extra mile helped for somebody who was very shy of speaking who had stage fear like crazy training gave me the confidence to go and stand up on stage and speak and speak and speak so if not i i had written to my training vice president saying will you give me an opportunity to stand up and speak i don't think i would have gotten the platform so i started doing training then i started doing public speaking outside i used to go weekend after weekend to colleges to go and talk to students uh, so much so i have worked for 36 consecutive weekends uh, at a stretch visiting colleges and speaking and that honed my public speaking skills and that public speaking skills led me to start martyrum foundation the martyrum as an ngo is very unique we are probably one of the very few ngos in the country which does not take a single penny as donation but we educate about 2000 students now the story is like this it was in one such public speaking assignment that the editor of a tamil newspaper actually walked up to me and said there is a young girl waiting outside refusing to come in would you like to meet her she just wants to ask a simple question and that day i decided to meet her and that's the result why martyrum started long story short the girl was a 12 standard pass out she scored 1154 out of 1200 which is a phenomenal score by the way lost her father lost her mother a father was an alcoholic and she was working as a domestic help in four houses to support her own education and her siblings education and she didn't ask me for help she didn't say will you sponsor my education all she wanted to know was will you guide me on which course i should study and i asked her how will you study she said i still have to work and that is where i realized i go and speak in all these colleges for the last 13 14 years why not ask for a free seat why not ask for a free seat now to my young friend sitting here all i want to tell you is when you want to help somebody don't feel shy in asking for help when you ask for help from somebody the maximum the worst answer that you will get is sorry i can't do it no it's the biggest answer that you can get that that can shy you away but what if that person says yes you can change the life of the person and that exactly the gentleman did when i asked for one engineering seat he said i'll give you 20 seats and now i was wondering well, what do i do with 20 seats i only have one student so we started advertising in the radio and stuff like that and that's how martyrum started and this kid who was working as a domestic help goes on to work for one of the top most product company in the country today almost earning about 25 lakhs per annum now taking care of her siblings and if not i had met that one girl and if not i had taken the effort to go that one step outside the auditorium to meet her i don't think i'll be standing here and talking to you as a founder of matter foundation which educates 2000 plus students across 50 plus universities right now since i am in satyabama tedx in satyabama i want to share this story and this is a very powerful story i shared this in my first tedx talk and after that i have not used it anywhere and it is so apt that i thought i should use it the new the story right here now the picture that you see on your screen is it very familiar it's it's something that we see in india day in and day out yes you you see this picture day in day out and what you see in this picture is a lady standing a visually ch challenged lady standing there and don't be misguided she is not asking for arms 
she is rather selling candies she she sells uh, candies in the railway station but what is striking in this picture is not the visually challenged lady but if you can see a young kid sitting there and studying right that's the most striking picture and this picture was shot outside the tambram railway station in a place called where we have the famous madras christian college the picture was shot right there now several hundreds and thousands of people cross her every day nobody bothered to check what she was doing except for a guy called santanam who is a seventh standard dropout working in infosys as a housekeeping staff right so he goes every day and he saw this lady and wanted to check what is she doing why is she standing there because one santanam desired to speak to her he got the shock of her life when she said she is a double graduate and she she chose to sell candies to support the family so santanam comes to me and says sir this lady looks very decent why can't we do anything about it can you like would you like to meet her i said why don't you bring her out to office so this next picture was shot at my office and that's the day when i realized suguna and her husband both are visually challenged they have two children both of them going to government school and when i spoke to suguna i got the shock of my life because i realized that she was a ba ba she has finished her ug and finished her teacher training course and a ba and was pursuing her masters and i asked her normally i see people visually challenged people selling candies or stuff like that walking up and down going in train why are you standing in one particular place doesn't it take time and suguna tells me sir we don't have power at home there's no electricity at home which does not bother me or my husband but it does bother my kids now the reason why i stand in one place and finish all this is i am a teacher so i finish all my homework for my kid standing there i teach her and that's the reason why she sits stands sits right under my legs and finishes her homework because once she comes home there's no electricity the young one would go and pray to the local temple every day saying my mother is educated why are you not giving her the job why are you not giving her the job why would she do that so when i met her always remember when somebody comes and asks for help the first thing that we do is pull out our wallet give money i'm sure all the people sitting in this audience the entire audience would have done that at least once in our lifetime great work charity you need to give money whenever it is required but sometimes money alone does not help so i remember telling suguna i'm going to give you at that particular point in time all i could afford was 12000 rupees so i gave her 12000 rupees and i told suguna look you are not going back to the railway station again promise me that you will not go to the railway station again by the time you spend this 12000 rupees it's my job to get you a job i don't know with what confidence i told her right because i'm not an expert in uh, recruiting people who are visually challenged or different label some commitment something made me tell that i so i told her by the time you finish your 12000 rupees i will get you a job i believe in the power of social media social media can be used for multiple positive reasons apart from writing trash all over so i wrote about suguna on facebook a social media platform on facebook i wrote about her several hundreds of people wanted to help her by saying i'll give you money i know that money will die down if you are not going to help her with her career some of them said why don't you take her to infosys and set her a small shop which can sell cool drinks and toffees and things like that and that sounded to be a good idea but then i realized she is a double graduate she wanted to be a teacher so i said okay let me try this and again once again i looked looking for the extra mile i figured out that there was a school right next to infosys uh, called the mahindra world school and there the principal was a friend of mine so i took, i called her and spoke to her and i asked her a very simple question look i have somebody like this i met somebody like this she is a teacher training graduate would you like to meet her once the reason why i asked her is i wanted to know whether subna will qualify as a teacher and if she qualifies as a teacher i thought i can get her into some private school which will pay her 8000 to 10000 rupees mahindra world school was not in my radar because i know the standards in which they hire dr nirmala krishnan the principal she said why don't you bring her over so i took subna for an interview and she was interviewed by a four member panel subna didn't know it was an interview at all in the first place every single question that the principal asked subna would give an answer in a flash and there was one tricky question dr nirmala krishnan looked at subna and asked her look if i'm going to hire you as a tamil teacher you can speak tamil only in the class but outside the school the official language is english how will you manage 
And if you have interacted with visually challenged people, you will know that they can't see your face. They always look at the ceiling and speak. Subhana, in a most innocent voice, looked at the ceiling and she said this, Ma'am, English is after all a language. It's not as difficult as Tamil. Tamil is very tough. And trust me, I'm a BA, BA and pursuing my master's in Tamil. And for your information, my mother tongue is not Tamil. I'm from Saurashtra. And if a Saurashtrian can learn in Tamil as a major, I don't see any reason why I can learn English. Give me six months time, I will pick uh, learning English. And uh, that's the first time I saw somebody in the interview panel breaking down. So she looked at me and she did this. She did a thumbs up signal, which I didn't quite understand. I didn't quite understand. She stepped out, came back with an offer letter appointing Subhana as a Tamil teacher in Mahindra World School for a salary of 22,000 rupees. This picture was shot on the day Subhana got the job and what you see in the background is the school where Subhana eventually joined. Right? So that's the first day uh, of the day when she got her job and it didn't stop there. Look at what happened. Both the kids who you saw in government school were admitted to the same school where Subhana is joined, has joined as a teacher. And this picture was taken on Jan 1st of 2016, sorry, June 1st of 2016. And I will not forget what the principal wrote to me. I was in Delhi that day. She said, Sujit, nothing gave me more joy than welcoming these two children. This is the second most happiest moment. The first happiest moment was the day when I, the nurse handed over my son to me when I delivered my son. So both the kids joined the same school where Subhana joined as a teacher. Newspaper started covering about her. Now you can see new start for visually impaired women and so on. Some 23, 24 newspapers started writing about her. And then this happened in 2017. What is Oscars for an actor? What is Grammy for a musician? What is Filmfare for an Indian movie star? Is what Ability Foundation awards for a differently able person. In 2017, Subhana went to win on, win the Ability Foundation awards, winning a cash prize of 1 lakh out of 186 nominations from 23 different states. So she was one of the winner. And then you can see who's handing over the check. The Chancellor of Satya Bama University was, uh, was, was one of the jury and she handed over the check of 1 lakh. Now normally when I coach people, when I train people, yeah, she deserves a very, very big round of applause. And the beauty, when I train and coach people, if you push them a little harder, they will go on to achieve great things. So I asked two promises from Subhana. One, she will go on to finish her PhD. And second, she will be a public speaker where she will go and talk about her own story. I said, Subhana, I will talk about you for the next two, three years. After that, you should go and talk about you. And Subhana is a very, very positive aspiring person. Now look at what the newspapers are writing. A trailblazer for women disabled, visually impact teacher who once sold candy is now a motivational speaker. Right now, this is what the newspaper started covering her. This is probably one of the best moments in Subhana's story. Look at who tweeted about Subhana. Anand Mahendra, group MD of Mahendra and Mahendra has this thing to say. When I list things that makes me come to work every day, it is stories like these which are the greatest motivators. When I went and told Subhana, Anand Mahendra has tweeted about you. She innocently asked me in Tamil, Yaar sir, a school owner up. For her, Anand Mahendra is Mahendra school owner. That's all she knows, right? But Anand Mahendra tweeted about Subhana. Life didn't stop there. Subhana, this is the first talk Subhana delivered to about 3,000 Infosys employees. Her first talk had 3,000 Infosys employees. Look at this picture, very, very special picture. This is the day when Subhana met Dr. Marizina Johnson, who said, I'm going to sponsor your PhD. Subhana is currently pursuing her PhD. For Subhana pursuing her PhD in a different university, Satyabama University is paying a stipend of 22,000 rupees every month, right? Because she wants to, Marijana Johnson made it a promise, sir, make sure that she finishes her PhD and if there is an opportunity, she will come and work here. So you can see multiple people have gone the extra mile to see what Subhana has achieved today. I just want to invite you to look at these two pictures. The difference between these two pictures is exactly one year, exactly one year. The first picture was shot on April of 2016. The next picture was shot on May of 2017. The lady in the green salwar is an IIT PhD scholar who works for Infosys. And that's the first talk Subhana delivered. And she came running to Subhana and asked for an autograph. Visually challenged people don't sign. They don't sign. So the first signature for Subhana was an autograph. I will not forget what Subhana told me in 2019, March, International Women's Day. 
because ever since then sumana has been delivering talks winning awards left right and center almost all news channels have covered march of 2018 she called me to say sir please take a guess where i went today for her every every small thing she has to tell me she bought a refrigerator she will tell me she bought a television she will tell me now she tells me guess where i went today and i said where, where did you go did you get another award she said yeah you are partially right but i didn't go to receive the award this time i was the chief guest in the women's day function where i went and gave the awards then she said you didn't ask me where i said where did you go she said right where you picked me up from the street i was the chief guest in the women's day function at madras christian college and that gave me goosebumps because it was right outside that college it was right outside that college the sumana was selling candies for 5 years hoping somebody will make a difference if not for that one santanam who went that extra mile if not for that one dr marijina johnson who said i am going to do this for her thousands and thousands of people who go the extra mile try and make the difference i just want to invite you are you ready to take that one extra step going that one extra mile to make a difference to somebody else's life thank you very much my pleasure talking to you